Hey everyone, Jeremy here, aka Mr. UW, and today I'm going to make you a sh uh, video showing the PCB I've been developing. Um, this is right here is what it is. It is a helper PCB that is meant to be interfaced with any of the Sega JVS IOs, revisions one through three, and also it can work with um, the Capcom IO to give you analog controls. A lot of people don't know that the Capcom IO, if you have the proper controller cooked up to it, can let you play racing games such as Crazy Taxi. And I'm going to show you how that works um, with this thing. Um, this is the way it's set up. It has these connectors. Um, this right here is a 40 pin connector that will connect via ribbon cable to a Revision 2 Sega JVS IO. The 60 pin connector here will connect via ribbon cable to a Revision 1 and a Revision 3. Um, this right here, I'll show you. This is a Revision 1. This is probably the most common one you'll find on like eBay or whatever. And this will work for probably. I don't know, 80% of the games out there that, that require a, a JVS IO. There's some that require more advanced ones. Um, for example, I have here a Revision 2, which some games on the Lindbergh require. Um, it won't even boot without this revision. There's also a Revision 3 that's much more expensive out there and harder to find, but it will also work with this if you have one. Um, these ports right here I've got player one on this side and player two on this side and each one each player has two ports he's got a DB25 port which I have made a modified um, standard based on what mass systems use for their supernova controllers um, here's the port see DB25 this is um, a supernova controller I know some of their newer ones uh, used a DB25 instead of a DB25 but um, mine had DB25, so I used it, but also a bunch of these pins weren't being used, so I took advantage of that and I assigned different buttons or different controls to each pin, which I will um, show the standard in my video and also make it available for anyone to see. So it has each DB25 port will have all your controls up, down, left, right, button one through seven, couple auxiliary buttons, four different analog controls. Um, start button, coin button, service button, test button, they're all on this right here. So you can modify your controls however you want. Um, and it also has a game port so you can take your PC joystick, modify it slightly and plug it right in and say for example play um, Afterburner Climax. Once you modify the control you just plug it in here and boot up Afterburner Climax and you're able to play the game. Um, it's just as simple as that. Um, this thing also takes care of a few things that provides an automatic loop back so you don't have to worry about looping back the power to power the IO and also has these here which are these two resistors and those of you that work with IOs know that you have to um, add in a 100 ohm resistor to emulate a coin meter for certain games to even boot or in order to coin up a game it won't even let you add coins if there's no coin meter present so I took advantage of this um, design thing and made it so you don't have to worry about that. It's automatically taken care of if you buy this. You don't have to worry about that. All you have to do is plug in from your ribbon cable um, from this PCB to your IO, plug in your controller, and it'll work. Um, also, you'll see that I have all these jumpers. One thing about a lot of the newer PC-based games is there's not a standard for what button does what. So, for example, um, one racing game might have your turbo button or your boost um, on a player one um, pin on the IO but for some reason like example race TV which is one of my favorite games has the boost button mapped to a player 2 wire for some reason so I have it so you can cut the little trace in between each jumper and then put a pin in and bridge it using one of let me show you like something like this to bridge it and I'll show you I had to do it for um, one of the flying games you would just, for example, plug this in here. I want to change my um, my fourth um, analog device to be to the third analog device pin, and it just bridges like that. But let's say, for example, I would just take um, one of my auxiliary buttons and bridge it over to like player two shot one, which is over here, and because player two shot one is what Race TV uses as a boost, and I would just put a wire between the two and then all of a sudden your auxiliary button over here becomes the boost for race TV 
and I can kind of demonstrate that it doesn't make a lot of sense I can just demonstrate it in a different video or something but for now let me show you it hooked up and how it works just want to show you what I was using before I made this uh, helper PCB this was the adapter I used um, it had the 60 pin connector would plug in on the IO and the 26 pin here it would work with the revision one and then it came it was all in here and uh, soldered in and I had my DB25 connector here and I also had done some testing with the DB15 connector for the joysticks here so I had this all plugged in there as you can see it's ugly as hell but the other problem is these wires are so thin that they would uh, they would break I would have to re-solder and I've tried to do everything using hot glue and everything in there but it's real sloppy looking so I think the, the solution I made there is a lot better than this all right, so this is your standard Sega JVS Revision 1. I have it hooked up to my Lindbergh power supply there um, with some special wires I made to power the I.O. Uh, there's several different ways. As long as you have 12 volts here and 5 volts at that top one, it'll power the, I, the I.O. Um, the same type of connector is used for the different revisions of I.O. So once you make your little adapter here, you can use it for any I.O. that you want to. Um, here I have a 60 pin ribbon cable that will connect to my PCB. I also have a 26 pin for the analog. Um, if I were to sell any of these, I would make sure I had cables that were the proper length um, to make it comfortable to fit in your cabinet or wherever you want to put it. But for now, this is what I'm using because it's what I was able to get off eBay. Let me show you this, how it connects. So I have my PCB right here and I have the 60 pin. So all I would have to do is plug in the 60 pin cable right here, just like that. And then the 26 pin will come over and plug in just like this. And like I said, it is a little awkward from the sizes, but that's how it, it connects up. So plug this in. So in a nutshell, that is it hooked up. To the IO. Now what I what I can do once there, I can either hook up um, for example um, my my mass systems supernova controllers hooked up there or I can take my joystick that I was showing you and it will hook up with the DV15 the side over here. I could also take my racing wheel and hook it up to a port. And let me just to show you, once I turn on the I.O., you can see I'm getting power. You might recognize this wheel from my other video where I just showed I was adding the light sequencer. So I've got power going in through the connector, 5 volts and ground through the DB25 connector. It's all mapped out. So this controller will work. You can see I got power. Um, I also, if you look over here, with this Revolution X gun, I modified it. As you can see right down here, I bought it off eBay real cheap, and I pulled up the schematics for the gun, and I wired in an adapter to DB25, which these can get very cheaply on eBay. And they just have little solder cups. You just solder the wire to each pin individually that you need, so you can only have to use the wires you need. And then this will plug right in to one of my ports there, and I'll be able to play Rambo. And I'll actually demonstrate me playing Rambo using my PCB in a little bit. Um, also, before I get started, let me show you this. This is an adapter that um, a guy sent me. We're doing a trade. I'm going to give him one of my prototypes. But, um, Many of you will probably know him as Undamned from the Neo forums. Um, what this is, is his um, USB decoder. And it allows you to plug in a Xbox 360 or a PlayStation 3 USB controller. And it splits off the digital control. So I, put in, I hooked it up to an adapter that will plug into my PCB. And then you just plug in one of those controllers. And then you can use your Xbox or PS3 controller to control your arcade game. Um, he designed these, I think, mostly to be used in super guns anyway. But if you're using this in a cabinet or whatever, you can just plug in, plug that in right there. 
plug in the USB controller and then you're playing say Virtua Fighter 4 um, with a Xbox 360 stick and I'll just demonstrate that a little bit later too. So let me hook, start a game up here and start showing you it working. Fight for the struggle, die to be free. I fly if I must be. Fight on with rusty guns, or just the no. 